Oh, are we on? I think so. How are you? I've uh, switched over to, to our Automevo, Automevo at your service. Oh my goodness. Feeling a bit tired today, working our way through our checklist of all the things we got to do to be ready to, uh, to take our trip in the Kimbo. Um, went down to visit the guy who sold me the truck today to show him the suspension modifications I'd done and talk to him about that kind of stuff. And uh, then went to Costco for a little food supply re reinforcement. And uh, now I'm here. We're, <laughs> we're having the house cleaned two days before we're leaving. I'm not sure why, but uh, well, I actually am sure it'll be it'll be nice nice for whoever's here while we're gone. Uh, so good day, Christopher, uh, Craig. Good to see you here, Dave. What is up? Rachel, it's Tuesday. That means ancient people of the Bible as opposed to aliens. Yes, ancient people. Today's today's story, uh, I just read it. <laughs> prep. I do the prep right before the show. Oh, my goodness. I do need a little bit of a break. And so I don't think there's going to be a show Friday or Saturday this week. And then uh, next, the next two weeks after that are going to be kind of catch as catch can. I, my intention is to be there be here, be here, there, be there, here, there with you. But uh, if I can't make it, I can't make it. So there you go. Truck talk with Jake. Yeah, pick. It's truck talk. Um, <laughs> it's Craig, you're sad. Well, I'll do the best I can. Maybe it's going to happen. Maybe it is going to happen. I just feel so tired. Has there ever been a Saturday show? Dave, there has... Well, I used to do Saturday shows all the time before... Before the thing, before the thing, there used to be Saturday shows all the time. But I haven't done a Saturday show here for the Daily Briefing. Maybe there will be. Maybe there'll be a Saturday show. I'm going to try. I'm shooting for 3 p.m. California time, West Coast time. And uh, if I'm here, that's when it'll happen. Unless I'm just posting a video. And then you'll see that. It's 5 in Chicago. Happy hour, Michael. Yes, Jen is here. Good to see you. Michael Hoos, good to see you. H. H is for hi. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, Lady Jerry is furiously preparing. Our daughter is not feeling super special, but we have to take her to get some hiking boots. We're going to take her to get some flip-flops and, uh, and Crocs, possibly. Uma uh, Keys, you and Uma are going to fitness boot camp. Going to be sexy bitches. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. I, that's, what I, that's what I'm going for. Uh... Sexy bitches. I don't even know if you're allowed to say sexy bitches anymore. Um, six in C bus happy hour, one hour in. Hmm, I'm not sure even what that means, but uh, I like it. All right, today's today's Bible story. And I have to say, I am a bit tired. The jujitsu was vigorous this morning. Oh, my neck is a little sore. My back is a little sore. My shoulders are like I couldn't take a shower uh, yet today. So, oh, Samuel. Uh, this is Saul, the first king of the Israelites. Um, this is uh, Saul, the first king of the Israelites. Um, uh, yes, Michael, I, I see you. You're in Switzerland. It's still late. Can I do a late night show, <laughs> which would be earlier for you? Um <clears throat> You mean a, a late late night show as opposed to a super late night show? <coughs> <coughs> Focus on camping. Yes, Jen, I'm going to try. Focus on camping. Be hiking or sleeping, or driving the truck to a new place to hike and sleep. But meanwhile, back in the promised land, Saul, the first king of the Israelites, Samuel, you may remember, the priest. Uh, grew old. People asked him to appoint a king to rule over them. Samuel asked God what he should do. Good idea. Uh, there's a man called Saul of the tribe of Benjamin, and he is the one you must choose, God said. He will make himself known to you. All right, but God's sketchy on the details. There's short, short on details. Shortly afterwards, a tall young man came up to Samuel on a hill outside the city and said, I've lost three of my donkeys, and uh, I know you're a prophet. Can you tell me where they are? 
It's like, really? That's what you're going to the prophet for? To find out where your donkeys are? The Bi Things were simpler back in the Bible. I can't find my donkeys. <laughs> What's your problem? Can't find my donkeys. Oh my God. What are we paying therapists for? For our ridiculous problems? I can't pay my mortgage. This guy can't find his donkeys. Also bad. Your donkeys are safe, Samuel replied. Now come with me, for you are to be the first king of Israel. Saul was astonished. <laughs> I came in here looking for my donkeys, and now I'm king of Israel almost. Uh, but I'm unimportant, he exclaimed. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest of all the tribes of Israel. And my family is the least important family in the smallest tribe. Samuel reassured him and led the astonished, again astonished Saul, back to his house, where he gave him food and then anointed him with oil, pouring it over his head. Now... Back in the Bible, maybe they liked having oil poured over their heads. But nowadays, I wouldn't try it at a dinner party. Somebody you haven't seen in a while, hey, let me pour some oil on your head. Like, no, no, thank you, Samuel. I'm not into that. Um, With this oil, Samuel said, I declare you king. Now you must return home. On your way, you'll see two men who will tell you your donkeys are found. <laughs> you oily-headed king. I've seen, Saul does not ask for a crown. The oil is good enough for him. So you're going to meet two men who will tell you your donkeys are safe. Next, you'll meet three men. The first, leading three young goats. <laughs> the second, carrying three loaves of bread. And the third, a bottle of wine. Not three bottles of wine, one bottle of wine. They will give you two of their loaves. Lastly, <laughs> this sounds like a word problem in math class. Lastly, you will come across a group of prophets making music and singing praises to God, and you will join them. So these are prophets who kind of have a side gig as a band. Um, everything happened exactly as predicted. That's why all the numbers of things to Samuel can be sure, or Saul can be sure, like, oh, now, you guys have only had three loaves, so you're not the, <laughs> you're not the prophets I was, I'm looking for. Uh, everything happened exactly as predicted, after which Samuel called the children of Israel together. And uh, big show. Children of Israel, I'm here to show you your king, he told them. Where is Saul of the tribe of Benjamin? It seems like they should have had some show prep here, because Samuel's going on stage, he doesn't even know where Saul is. But Saul was overwhelmed, was hiding among some baggage. He was soon found, however, and brought before Samuel, where he stood head and shoulders taller than any man there. <laughs> That's why they picked him to be the king, evidently. Super. What God realized is, if you want to be king of the Israelites... You need a really tall dude. Uh, he is your ruler, said Samuel. The man God has chosen to be your king. And the people shouted, Long live the king! What's his name again? Saul! Saul! Yes, long live Saul! Afterwards, Samuel wrote down the rules of kingship, um, dedicating his account to God. <laughs> these are the rules of kingship. And I didn't make these up. These came straight from God. You'd like to speak to God? No, I'm sorry. He's very busy. With who? We're the chosen people. Never mind. These are the rules. Get back to work. Wash that oil out of your hair. Then he told all the people, men, women, and children, just in case you don't know who he's talking about, to return to their homes. Return to your homes! King of Israel! Show's over! Go home. Remember, he's the tall guy. <laughs> See you next week. Um, next week in uh, the Bible, or maybe not necessarily next week, next time, next time in the children's Bible, Saul's downfall. So that did not last very long. Literally, turn the page. One day, you're king of the Israelites. The next day, it's time for your downfall. And so the moral of that story is, the moral of these two stories, back to back, is uh, enjoy it. Hey, when they anoint your head and declare that you're the king of Israel, try and enjoy it. Schedule your party for as soon as possible uh, because uh, the downfall is coming. They build you up so as to knock you down later. So there you go. There's your there's your Saul. Um, oh God, you and Dave are talking here. Uh, oh boy. Michael, you're saying I need glasses and a magnifier? No, it's glasses and a flashlight. The light is bright on me, but the book is kind of dim. And it's printed very small. It's a children's Bible. It's printed small for children. Um, uh, all right. Where, where are we at here? 
Jen, you and Dave are having an argument about your diabetic diet. Well, that's terrible. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you're saying you were worried the robotic camera would not be coming back? Gnarly as he is, he certainly adds suspense. Yeah, he builds it up, doesn't it? Makes it exciting. It's uh, it's uh, uh, it's a good uh, look. Or what did Ed? So what did Ed say that uh, uh, Opie says? Uh, Ron Howard says. So what happened to the three donkeys? Jen was bugging me. <laughs> yeah, well, Dave, I don't know what happened. Doesn't mention in the children's pilot. Children want to know what happened to the donkeys, the loaves of bread. The one bottle of wine, I think we all know what happened to the one bottle of wine. Um, now get out of here, you oily-headed butter dick. Thanks, Todd. Uh, oh, you just threw up in a Home Depot parking lot. Jen, that sounds terrible. But if there's one place where they have the stuff to clean it up, it's the Home Depot. So look on the bright side. There's a lot of janitorial surprise there. And you peed yourself at the same time. Well... If you're going to Disneyland, you might as well ride all the rides. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> all right, it's time for today's letter from Grandma. If you can believe it, if you can, it's time. It's time for that. Um, oh man, I'm just looking over here at the battery-powered portable shower. I just can't wait to be using this thing out in the wilds of the West Coast. Um, <clears throat> all right. January 17th, 1984. I was 24 year, or 23 years old uh, in January of 1984. Uh, Charlotte and I were alone Christmas. So much snow. Some places blocked between Marshalltown and Gladbrook, which is it's not that far between Marshalltown and Gladbrook, but there were, some places were blocked. Two families, one with a baby. Oh, we've heard, well, we've heard all of these before, but I remember this particular one. Uh, two families, one with a baby, stopped at a farmhouse west of town and stayed all night Christmas Eve. Oh, it is kind of a Christmas story, isn't it? Uh, the daughter, who goes to University of Iowa, said they had enough beds and it was fun. The father is uh, quite a large cattle feeder. <laughs> he's not a man, he's a cattle feeder. Uh, not more than 15 or 20 um uh, at the candlelight uh, communion Christmas Eve because it's a blizzard. All right, we really did have some bitter cold weather. A man on the next block is raising foxes, so remember this, in four pens by the corn bins and claims they won't mate without being in the dark. Foxes love it in the dark. I like the lights on sometimes, but uh, anyway, Charlotte and I, uh, Uh, protested, he darkened the street light. Ah, he, he darkened the street, they probably shot the street out light. Then the light company man put it back like it was, and it looked like he shot out the light bulb, because those foxes want it dark when they're having sex. And so he shot the light bulb out. But today, Tuesday, January 17th, the light company uh, put the new, put a new bulb back again. I'm glad you're busy, and I wish you well with your work, but I wish you would consider school again. Never, <coughs> never gets old. Math theme seems so easy for you. It's easy for my daughter too, and I have to admit, feeling I feel, I'm feeling Grandma's advice when I talk to my own daughter. She tells me she wants to be. I don't even think there are journalists anymore. But you got to let kids be what they want to do when be. <laughs> they pick their own adventure. Uh, I just finished. Uh, oh, I just hoped you might uh, be an assistant at Iowa State sometime. Uh, a young man who grew up on a farm near Lincoln, his parents uh, go to our church, graduated from Ames ISU on December 23rd, 1983, in Doctor of Philosophy degree uh, in <laughs> aerospace engineering, uh, Doctor of Philosophy in aerospace. Uh, that's he's he's the Neil deGrasse Tyson of the of their day. There were 1,392 grads. Could have been 1,000. Uh, 393, but I was not in attendance. He also has been teaching at ISU. Mother, Dad, and Sue came to see Grandma and Grandpa, Jay, and us, January 14th. Uh, she of Charlotte and Amaryllis, and it has four pretty red buds. One is open, 
a blouse, a necklace, cover for her camera, uh, popcorn, and neckties and ribbons. They gave me a jacket, blouse, opal necklace, uh, unsalted peanuts, candy mitts, and two neckties. I didn't get any neckties, but I bought some underpants and some salted peanuts at Costco today. So there, there's your tie-in. Uh, they brought Grandma and Grandpa over uh, to the house for dinner Saturday. Um, then supper, we went to that place in Conrad. So dinner is lunch, supper is dinner, if, if you follow me. And Sunday noon, we ate at a remodeled drive-in at Glabrook, and the food is good there, too. I'm glad Sue is home. So much unrest in England, uh, and she will be back to uh, Oshkosh. That's where she went to graduate from college. I'm glad you were with Rita and friends for dinner on Christmas. So many people are alone. December was very cold here and lots of snow. Pauline, let me read Rita's letter, and I saw your card. Lots of love, Grandma. Okay, so that was a little Christmas uh, Christmas in uh, June. Not quite Christmas in July. There are some newspaper clippings, but uh, I think we we'll skipped that this time around, the letter from Grandma. So, um, <clears throat> oh my gosh. So that's our letter from Grandma. Uh, oh, Ouija wood. Uh, I'm looking to see. Uh, don't send my, my daughter to stand-up comedy camp, Ouija. No, I don't. Uh... Cheese, schna cheese and schnapps is not helping your stomach issues. Yeah, I, schnapps is not my favorite. Um, Michael, what are you saying? Down to two bottles of wine and still all of it does not make sense. In between a children's Bible, portable shower, and a grandma a Christmas story, Jake, this, need more cheese and schnapps to survive. Well, Michael, uh, I can't help you. I, 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 know, I know where I can send you some... <laughs> A bag of gummy dicks, but uh, I don't know how to get you cheese and schnapps. Um, Dana, you, your job has you working 10 hour shifts. Oh my god, yeah, I haven't seen you here in a while. I assume you've been watching your off hours. Pick, you were born in the age of indoor plumbing and air conditioning for a reason. Enjoy your portable toilet. Yeah, Pick, I'll let, I'll let you know how we like the portable toilet. Um, a gorilla in California tore a sink off the wall, Michael, you're saying. Uh, when asked what happened, she signed to her trainer. The cat did it. Hmm, I like that. Is Jake working the clubs yet? Not yet, Dana, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get out. I'm on the waiting list. I'm in line, I'm waiting patiently in line with my mask on. Um, Michael, you didn't know the gorillas could use sign language? Well, they not all of them can, uh, but some of them can. Uh, isn't that right? Coco, she used some sign language. Robin Williams met Coco. Um, I know. I don't know why. I don't know how I know that or why I know that. But that's that's a thing that I know. Um, all right. I'm going to do a question out of the question box, and then I'm going to seize the day at because uh, I got to go get some hiking boots for our daughter <laughs> and uh, teach everybody how to use the portable toilet. What's the greatest sports team of all time? Sometimes the question box. I, I don't even know what's the greatest sports team of all time. Um, I think it's the hockey team that beat the Russians in 1980, blah, blah, blah. And that's the greatest sports team of all time. It's not the dream team. The dream team is great. And the, I could, you could make an argument that it's the dream team. But that hockey team, that uh, when Kurt Russell was their coach, oh boy, that was a big year. Um, so I think I'm going to go straight to seize the day today because I've got a to-do list a mile long. Part of it's preparing. I gotta go. I gotta prepare for jury duty when I get back. Coming wow, out of the out of the camping campfire and into the frying pan. Uh, that's the opposite of how it's supposed to go. But yeah, Oakland A's back in the '60s. '60s pick. Yeah, I suppose they were good. Um, so it's time for seize the day. I'm gonna do a seize the day. Seize the day, and hopefully, Lady Jerry will be will be with us a little bit in the camper. If, if we do get to do a show, um, but as you say, we may just be taking a break, taking a break, uh, like the Cheers song, going to a place where everyone knows your name, and it's just my wife, but she'll be everyone, and she does know my name. Today's Seize the Day is by Tony Robbins, very tall, motivational guy with some big teeth. He's got big teeth, and he's very tall. 
Is it Tony Robbins? That's correct. And let's see how much you bet. Uh, Tony Robbins sees day. If you talk about it, it's a dream. If you envision it, it's possible. But if you schedule it, it's real. And I'm scheduled to go pick up this damn camper. Um, so I'm going to do that. And I'm also scheduled to see you guys tomorrow, 3 p.m. California time, 3 p.m. California time. Uh, hang in there, Michael. I hope you're able to get some schnapps and some cheese and uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Be nice to a jerk and don't give up. There'll be plenty of time to get up, give up later. Keys, good luck with the boot camp. Manana.